So up to now, we've been uh, mainly interested in the total consolidation or the total settlement. Um, but we're also interested in the time it takes for soils to settle. And that's what these set of videos are, are going to be about. So if we uh, return to this graph again uh, from our um, one-dimensional odometer test, um, where we have void ratio on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, um, before we put any load on, um, the soil has a, an initial void ratio, and then we st when we stick uh, a load on, um, the void ratio will decrease until it reaches a new a new uh, level, a new level of equilibrium uh, down here. Now, if we um, if we say that well, at this point, what we've got is a soil that's zero percent consolidated, and at this new level we describe as 100% consolidated. What we're defining is something called a degree of consolidation. So that's the value u. So the value u can be between 0 and 100%. Now, we can ask two questions of this. We can, or the same question in two different ways. We can say, um, given a certain length of time, let's say 10 days, what would be the degree of consolidation that we would expect? Alternatively, we might say, okay, well, how long does it take for a soil to reach a certain degree of consolidation? So that's the, uh, those are the two sort of, well, the same question, but the two different ways we're interested in, in asking it and, and trying to find answers for. So what controls this relationship, this consolidation relationship? Well, we invoke um, Tzagi's one-dimensional uh, consolidation theory for this. Um, who derived a, a parameter for describing the time it takes uh, um, for a soil to, to consolidate. Um, and that's the coefficient of consolidation. So we see V is the coefficient of consolidation. Now your CV value is a function of a number of different things, but as you can imagine, it's uh, directly proportional to the permeability of the soil. Okay. Um, the unit weight of water and the coefficient of volume compressibility. The proof of this 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 formula um, is a is a combination of Darcy's law and the conservation of, of mass. And I suggest if you're interested, you go through the the, the proof. Um, but we can derive CV uh, from a, a, a an odometer test, and I'll go through that in a, a later video. Um, but how is, how is that, va that value related to consolidation? Relationships are a solution of, of partial differential equations, and I'm not going to go through the, 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 the proof of that. Um, but what actually pops out of that is an equation that um, relates something called a time factor, which is TV, with your CV value, multiplied by the time of consolidation, all over the, the drainage pathway squared. So the, the time factor is related to u, the degree of consolidation. So um, you can relate u um, to the time factor. And you can do it either uh, through formulae, and there's a bunch of different formulae um, available for that. Um, there's also uh, some tables that help you relate those two things together, and I've stuck both um, on, uh, on my website, um, on the link below. Um, but what this is saying is that the, essentially the TV, which is related to the U, uh, the degree of consolidation, is equal to this coefficient um, of co consolidation. The time it takes, uh, or the, the, the time that we're examining this consolidation, and the drainage pathway squared. So before we move on, the relationship between TV and your degree of consolidation looks something like this, where there's a curve um, that, that relates the, the two together. And you can see that it's not linear. And there's a bunch of equations that govern um, this relationship, so you can draw more than one curve. And I've provided a, a, a link on my website to, um, to a, a more detailed explanation of those curves. So if um, TV, or your time factor, is related to your degree of consolidation, and your coefficient of consolidation is some sort of function of permeability, then, and T is the time span that we're interested in or we're looking at, 
what is uh, D, what is the drainage pathway? Well, there are two simple e examples that you can give of drainage pathways within soils. Um, the first one is if you have um, a, a soil that you're, you're interested in, it's consolidation. So let's say we have a clay and it's overlying um, an impermeable material like a bedrock. So this material here is impermeable. Uh, there's only one way for this, the water to get out of the, the soil once it's been loaded, and that's through the, the top of the, the stratum. So we have, um, uh, we might have a, a permeable layer above the clay here. So this might be permeable. Um, or we, uh, this might just be the ground surface. But in this case, there's only one uh, way the water can flow. So we take the drainage path here to be the thickness of the layer. So D, in this case, is equal to the thickness of the layer, H. An alternative example is if instead of we had an impermeable bedrock, but this was now permeable, and water could flow out of uh, both sides of the, um, the stratum, then our drainage pathway would be equivalent to H over 2, so half the thickness of the layer. So it's important when we're using this equation to know what situation we've got in terms of the drainage pathway, whether the clay is uh, lying on an impermeable bedrock uh, or an impermeable material or a permeable material.